Yeah, we about to get started. Stand by for the podcast. What's up? Stand by, stand by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on, everybody? Lock out me in right here. Welcome, 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 welcome to Lockout Men Podcast. What's going on? We got some we got a few topics for you today. Today's Sunday. Yeah. Today's Sunday, you know what I'm saying? We're about to get into it right quick. You know, start of a new work week. Some of you drivers are still driving. You know what I'm saying? Driving through Sunday. You know. Y'all don't get no time off. We, you know, some truck drivers just just don't get no time off. Some some truck drivers live within their means. Some truck drivers live in their in their trucks. They they only have, uh, you know, they gave up everything. They they live in a pneumatic lifestyle. They they threw everything to the wayside, and it's unfortunate that that's what it comes down to now. You know. Now that these truck drivers giving up everything that they that they had, they they need to be they they need to get they they need to get um they need to get paid. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's going on, everybody? Lockout Men podcast for you. I am your host, Lockout Men. What's going on? What's going on? Happy Sunday to you guys. You know what I'm saying? Yo, if you like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more content like this. Yo, we do it all over here. We got we got uh we, we we just got the podcast on whatever i think about you know or whatever the topic is or whatever's going on in the trucking community if you like craziness and all sorts of things make sure you check out the second channel which is lockout main m-a-n-e uh reactions and you can go over there and check out all the craziness that's going on over there on that channel as well well, let's let's talk about uh, let's talk about what's going on this weekend. For starters, this this guy from Facebook he he really came he really came up within the last couple of weeks, man. This dude's name is uh, Rick Santiago, Santiago, Rick Santiago. You know, crisp, clean looking, suave, devonair, Rico Suave type of truck driver. Uh, I believe he's a he's a fleet owner. He has a few uh, few trucks up under his belt, and uh, he's calling out all brokers. You know, this past uh, this past couple of couple of weeks has been hard for just about everybody across the across the spectrum in the in the trucking community. Um, especially for owner operators not not more so for company drivers because of course we get paid by the company but the companies that we drive for they're they're pretty much hit too you know what i'm saying they hit also you know a lot of freight is not is is not coming in a lot of us drivers are move are are moving but not moving as much as we want to a lot of us is sitting you know, once once we get finished with a load, we got to wait maybe about two, three, four hours for another load, you know. But do we get paid for waiting? Nope. Nope, we sure don't. We don't get paid for waiting. We get paid for moving. When them wheels move, that's when the sit per mile kicks in. That's when we get paid. That's how we get paid. We we get paid uh we get paid when the truck move. If the truck don't move for whatever for whatever point and the way that we do get paid is if we get stuck in the door and the company or the shipper and receiver or at the distribution place keep us a little bit longer than normal, you know, like over two hours because across the spectrum we have to give these companies two hours to load us and I don't understand why. 
But we within those two hours time, we don't get paid. After two hours drops off, then we get paid. Then we start to get paid for every hour that we're in the door. Now, unfortunately for me, I was stuck at the same place for I was stuck at the one place for damn near 16 hours. And then I was stuck again for about another six. I, I, I don't understand how and why. I mean, it's all going to the same place. I can understand if if we was going to like different stops, but I'm not. You know, I'm getting loaded for I'm getting loaded at the one stop ending at another stop and just got to be all day for to get loaded. I, I don't understand it. You know, I scratch my head on it. So. But that's the only way we get paid. But as far as owner operators and these lease contractors, they're going through it. They're going through it big time. They going, they are going through it big time with these brokers. And these brokers is just not being cool with them. So they decided to pack up and head to Washington, D.C., where they did a... Why, why, where they did a uh, a stance, a protest, and I want to ask you guys: is is that going to make a difference? Is that protest going to make a difference? Is slow rolling in different cities going to make a difference? I mean, pro. I mean, truck drivers been protesting at the end since the end of time. They've been protesting for everything from ELDs to regulations to now brokers to now this, you know. I just want to know, is is that some kind of way, is, is that some kind of way that's going to make a difference? Is, is blowing their horns in solidarity is going to make a difference other than making too much damn noise? Some people say that they, they need to organize. It's cool that they got together like this, but they need organization. They need they need someone to go on the Capitol and express the issues that's going on in the trucking community. Instead of that's in my opinion, I agree that but it's cool that they still got their solidarity on the streets. But have a representative go to Congress and and lay it all out on the line and say, look, this is what's going on. How how can you guys help us? We need help. You guys need us to keep moving this freight, but we need you guys to, to help us get paid to do it. Listen to Rick Santiago as he speaks to some of these uh some of these uh truckers truck truck drivers of america the american truck drivers now mind you there's a couple of foreigners in here as well but they're all american truck drivers check it out house on the south lawn oh hold on right quick you gotta change the sound up on that Okay, we had to change the sound up on that. <laughs> Check out what Rick says. And I brought a couple of friends with me, and I'm going to introduce them to you. Let's start with you, sir. What is your name? Vladimir, and I'm an American truck driver. Vladimir. Maria Alfonso, and I'm an American truck driver. Maria. My name is Victor, American truck driver. Victor. Alex, American truck driver. Alex. Vladimir. American truck driver. Vladimir. Vitaly. American truck driver. Vitaly. Alex, American truck driver. Alex. <clears throat> We're here today right outside of the White House for one reason and one reason only. We are being gouged on the rates that are being mm -hmm. offered to us to supply America their goods during this COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. We are not going to stop our fight for justice. We are asking the President of the United States to hear our voices. We are not statistics. 
We are people. Do you guys have an organizer? Are you the organizer? Yes, sir. All right. So, so he's he's calling out. He he's calling out for, uh, he's calling out for 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 help. He's calling out for for justice. You know, it, some of the some some feel that they are getting gouged in this pandemic. And you know, when there is a natural disaster, pandemic, or anything, you you notice that the prices goes up on everything. Now for the, now for the truck drivers, it seems like the prices is going down. They they can't seem to find freight that's a reasonable price they're only finding cheap freight 80 cents a mile 90 cents a mile a dollar a mile you know during this pandemic where people fail to realize that they have a lot of expenses insurance truck payments policies permits and all sorts of stuff a lot of people don't realize that and this is and this is what these particular truck drivers are fighting for they're fighting to make a living but my question is is they doing it the right way though you know they asking the president but should they take their fight beyond the president should they take their fight to capital to the hill let's see what this secret service guy came over and uh talked to rick about it's the Secret Service right here. Sure. Just very simple. Um, so what is the name of your... Are you guys a demonstration? No, sir. No, sir. What would you call yourself? We just, we're we're truck, truck drivers truck. of America. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I, I will say that you're demonstrating, bro. He, he says, he says that, uh, are you demonstrating? Yes. You're demonstrating the fact that you're getting gouged. So why wouldn't you say that you're demonstrating? You're demonstrating, bro. You're demonstrating the fact that you're getting gouged and you got everybody together to protest. You're truck drivers of America. Mind you, there's a couple of foreigners in there, but but they're all truck drivers of America. We just came here to shed some light on this industry and how we and regular people are being robbed by the brokers. So truck drivers of America? Yes, sir. Okay, my question is this. Now, I know he said that we are here to share some light on 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 the problem, but regular people? What regular people are getting gouged? You guys are getting gouged. Don't get me wrong. I'm on your side, but I'm just, you know, just listening to the conversation that they're having with this, this Secret Service guy, and it's kind of... I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe. You know. Maybe. Do you get paid more per mile to drive that than we do? I do not. I do not. Um, so to promote no. awareness of the industry? To shed some light on transportation industry? No, we already spoke you, to a li liaison no. from the White House, uh, Tim, Tim Williams. Uh, they're aware that we're here. We've got all the trucks here. Yeah, we've, we've heard you guys. Thank you. Yeah. So that means the president has heard us too. Uh, I, I can't speak for him, but um, there's a possibility. Sure, sure. So how many how many are there of you? Uh, how many truck drivers are there? Well, yeah, how many are going to be demonstrating? Oh, we're not demonstrating. We're, we're just going to do this video, and then we're going to go back to our trucks. Okay, so about... Would you say 30, 40? 27. 27. And how long are you going to be here? About oh, 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Any um, sound equipment? No, sir. Our voices, that is our sound equipment. Already? Any civil disobedience? Absolutely not. All right, so while they're taking the time to um, while they're taking the time to uh, speak to the gentleman from the Secret Service, I'm going to turn around and put a little bit of, in, uh, you know, my it's just my opinion, y'all. All right, 
my opinion and my opinion only all right so don't beat me up for having an opinion of what's going on now as i said before i do agree what's going on out there it is crazy that they're getting that they're getting gouged like that but it's 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 confusing at the same time you know it, it is confusing at the same time you the 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 truck drivers want to get paid to service the brokers to get the freight moved to wherever it needs to get to but on the flip side of that they you know on the flip side of that they don't want to be gouged either they got a family to feed just like the brokers got a family to feed you know so how do we come to a middle ground what what Let's say we come to a middle ground. What 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 that middle ground is? How are they going to get there? Oh, how are they going to get there? Hold on right quick. And I think Facebook if I'm not mistaken, Facebook is also doing some dirt too. They, Facebook is taking down all of all of the videos that had the protest going on. We are people. Do you guys have an organizer? Are you the organizer? Hold on right quick. Am I right or wrong? You're right. We cannot operate one more week. Here we go. Our voices. We're dealing with thousands of brokers. We will not be silenced. We will not be silenced. That's one man. We're dealing with thousands of brokers. Am I right or wrong? Thousands of brokers that are taking our money. Mr. President, I'm sure you're gonna be aware of this. That was secret service right there. Let me break it down to you in dollars and cents. Our, our average operating cost is fair to say $2 a mile. Minimum $2 a mile. However, we are being paid 60, 70, 80, 90, cents a mile to operate or to operate to haul essential goods to haul food to haul water etc there's a pandemic within trucking the trucking industry i encourage you to listen to our voices listen to our concerns don't let corporate modules try to get into your head don't let nobody who has ever driven a truck such as elaine and chow get into your head we are people you have stated repeatedly that we are essential we are not expendable. Am I right or wrong? You're right. You're right. There's no more cheap freight. 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 We want these brokers regulated. We want them investigated. We've lost enough money. Am I right or wrong? Okay. We want what's fair. We want transparency. We want justice. Justice. If there's talks about this pandemic continuing for months, we cannot operate one more week. Am I right or wrong? You're right. We cannot operate one more week. And if you think there's a problem now in America, imagine no food on the shelves again. It is us, the men and women of America, that haul this freight. Am I right or wrong? You're right. Absolutely right. Here we go. <laughs> uh, no. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh, they're trying to stop us. The devil is working hard, isn't he? Yeah. The devil is working hard. We're strong. We are strong. We want to stay here. The devil is working hard. This can't get any more real than it's getting right now. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, we're on a double-edged sword. We're damned if we do, and we're damned if we don't. If we don't, if we don't haul this freight, America goes hungry. If we haul this freight, we go hungry. There is a no-win situation here. Yep, there is exactly that. A no win situation. But what about but what about for the for the guys that's standing strong that's fighting for these rates? You know what I'm saying? What about these these the guys right here that says that they are getting hit, they're getting taxed 60, 70, 80, 90 cent a mile. Do you let me ask you this? Do you guys blame the brokers? Are the brokers to be blamed for that? What about other truck drivers that's taking that's that's taking those freights? 
that's taking those freights. I mean, when you got when you when you got so many drivers, when you got so many drivers and so little freight, where where's the money gonna come into place at? Somebody needs to move those freights, and these brokers is gonna get somebody to do it. Now maybe Rick and maybe Rick and this organized uh, organized organization that maybe they'll refuse to do it. But there's somebody else. There's a new Jack that's in the game, a new owner operator, a new, uh, uh, what do you call it? Independent contractor, a new person that's trying to get their feet wet, a new person that's trying to get that's trying to get into the game. It always works like that. Let me explain to you. Let me explain. Me being a business owner back in the day, you know what I'm saying? I ran my own business business was good you know when there wasn't so many people out there it wasn't saturated so the money was good a lockout would cost somebody about 60 70 dollars now a lockout is like 10 15 because there is so many guys out there that's doing it and they cutthroat they cutthroat so is it the broker's fault for the rates being the way they are or should we shed some of the light on the drivers or the owner operators or the independent contractors that actually taking those 60 cent rates 70 cent 90 cent a dollar rates i mean let's let's look at it theoretically here let's uh, come on now let's look at it theoretically let's look at it you got one driver and one truck and that driver may or may the only expenses that that truck has that driver has to that truck is the fuel think about it think about it if if he calls up and they say yo we got uh we got this freight that's going from such and such to such and such it's a thousand it's a a thousand dollars so that one man that one man one truck figures hmm let's see i don't have to make a payment on my truck until next week and the fuel on this is probably maybe about two three hundred dollars so i was still let's make it four so i would still have a six hundred dollar profit in my pocket that's what they that that's what they think about now you guys that's over here that has an operating cost of two dollars a mile and you guys might not decide to take that but that's because y'all probably might have more expenses than the guy that's don't have that much expenses so is it the broker's fault i mean that's something to think about right let's see what uh let's let's let me let me go over here right quick let me let me just read this to you guys right quick brokers push back against the allegations all right so there was a there was a two two uh brokerage firms one of them was trinity trinity logistics because of that female throwing them up under the bus and the other one is tql from out of ohio TQL came out and they want they came out and said they want to challenge Santiago's credibility by reference his past. That's how they do that though. They that's how some of these big guys do this. They they try to get the the spotlight off of them and try to and put it on him on the bad side, trying to show all his all of his past transgressions and stuff like that. They said for 23 years we've been taking well, we've been taking We've been taking the well-being of the carriers whom we work with very seriously, and we will continue to focus on those relationships through every market cycle. TQL claims that the margin, the margin claim of 65% is not typical for any 3PL, nor, re, nor reflective of Trinity Logistics margins. We are open and transparent, sharing our margarine information with our transport topic freight brokers. And this gentleman right here, listen to what he has to say. Brokers these days, most of it isn't true. Brokers don't set prices, the market does. 
Right or wrong, we shut down a $22 trillion economy overnight. We stopped shipping much of anything except food, paper. Now, he said that the, the brokers do not, let me repeat, he said the brokers do not set the prices the market does. For ...products and the things we needed to hunker down at home. The latest GDP numbers bear this out, showing that the U.S. economy contracted almost 14% in March. When there are too many trucks chasing too few loads, rates go down. And since mid-March, rates have plummeted. Just, just like I said, he, he, just, he just said that rates, too many, too many, uh, too, too many drivers chasing too little freight. If the freight ain't there and you got a lot of drivers chasing it, the bidding chops it down. You start at $1,000 at one person. Then another person come in and say, I can do it for 900 Another person come in and say, I can do it for 800 Another person come in and say, I can do it for 750 Another person come in and just so forth and so forth and so on. You get the picture? Do you guys get the picture? So is it the broker's fault or is it or is it the owner operators and the drive uh, owner operators independent contractors fault? There's there's plenty of blame to go around on both sides. No one is getting pre-virus rates like some snake oil salesman would have you believe. The trucking marketplace is huge, fractured and incredibly transparent. Shippers, like all buyers, want to get the lowest price possible. They know that there is not enough freight to fill all the trucks. And that's that's across the board, not just in trucking, but in in life. We 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 try we we try to hustle the lowest price possible. You know what I'm saying? Somebody you you bring somebody here to repair your house. They offer nine hundred dollars. Okay, well, I got eight hundred for you. Can we do it for eight? Now I need to stay at nine, bro. All right, how about eight fifty, man? Eight fifty. That's that's all I got on me. Eight fifty. That's across the board, not just in the trucking field. Not not just in the trucking field that everybody trying to get the lowest price possible, man. That's across the board. Everybody that's in business is always trying to get the lowest price possible so they can turn around and make a profit off of it. You buy something for a dollar and turn around and sell it for five. That's a four dollar profit. Who wouldn't want that? And it's been going on for years. It's just now it's just now coming to a head because of this this pandemic. But let me ask you guys something. Let me guys before I get up out of here. Let me ask you guys this. If this pandemic wasn't going on. Would this would this would this situation of, of the brokers offering cheap freight would have came to light? And would you guys would have did would organize to go to uh go to DC and and uh, and complain about it? Shippers and brokers offer rates to probe the market. Shippers do it to brokers. Brokers do it to carriers. So who does set the going rate? Like it or not. It's the motor carriers that accept it. If carriers yep. don't accept a rate, mm -hmm. both shippers and brokers will offer higher rates until the load is accepted. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. y'all hear that? Say it again, bro. Say it again. That accept it. Hold on. Hold on. Say it again. Just do it to carriers. So who does set the going rate? Like it or not, it's the motor carriers that accept it. If carriers don't accept a rate, both shippers and brokers will offer higher rates until the load is accepted. That's the free market economy that allows owner-operators, 
small carriers, and small brokers to operate. When the economy rebounds later this year, the same economy will result in rates skyrocketing, mm. and it will be the shippers complaining. Mm. So what about broker margins? Well, according to the most recent TIA 3PL market report, the average margin is 16%. All right, you guys can see the rest of that. I'll link I'll link that video in the uh, I'll I'll link that video in the uh, in the description before uh, below. Uh, if you guys have an opportunity to go over to Facebook before Facebook take everything down, and let me explain something about Facebook, something about YouTube something about instagram they trying to censor all you guys that's 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 protesting right now because they over here they claim that you're you're in violation of of the government uh, uh stay away from each other thing the six feet the six feet no congregation no you know, no, no coming together. Facebook feels that they they want to take all the videos down because they feel that you're in violation. That bullshit right there. But if you guys do get a chance to check out uh, Rick Santiago's uh, video on Facebook, make sure you go and uh, subscribe to him on Facebook, Rick Santiago. Make sure you guys go to the Facebook group. Um, uh, disrespected trucker yeah definitely go there you know what i'm saying you guys can find a lot of a lot of <laughs> disgruntled truckers over there um i'm one of them <laughs> now i'm not here now look i'm i'm just giving an opinion y'all so don't don't get mad at me don't don't get mad at the reporter all right i'm just i'm just basing my opinion this is this this ain't all no facts because you know like i said i'm not an owner operator i'm not an independent contractor i don't know what they're going through right now but i know that they're hurting they're hurting you know i mean i i've seen independent contractors i've seen lease operators when i can't when i when i when i call up this when i call up these companies and ask what they got to offer they the companies is only offering as a lease operator a dollar six cent a mile a dollar fifty cent a mile a dollar ten a mile a dollar less than a dollar a mile man you know what i'm saying so you guys got to read the fine print you, you really got to read the fine print and see where where's the margin at as far as you guys go on y'all expenses what's fair to you think of it this way what's fair to you may not be fair to others i'm just saying and think think about this now i'm about to get on up out of here y'all I, I know I'm, I'm a little bit over my 30 minute mark all right so i'm about to get on up out of here listen listen and this is for everybody new jets included all right so you know i i geared my i geared myself towards the new jets anyway because they them the one they they are the ones that's going to be need talk those the ones that's going to be gullible those the ones that's going to turn around and take that cheap freight so we need to get we need to get at them and let them know what's going on so listen to this when considering a trucking company all right and that's any trucking company swift snyder us express venture whatever it's important to do as much research as you can not every company is for every driver and not every driver is for every company let me repeat that think about it while i'm while i'm repeating it not every company is for every driver and not every driver is for every company all right whether it's home time freight pay or environment there's plenty of factors that comes into play when finding the right driving career for you think about that while i'm about to break up out of here think about all of that yo thank you if you like content like this and more don't forget to like subscribe comment share and hit that bell that bell that bell and that all button for more content like this i am your humble host lockout man and this is lockout man podcast if you want to come on and talk about the freight you want to talk about your experience you want to talk about 
uh, you, you want to chop it up with me about anything, you know, get at me for booking. Text me 216 600 2090. Get at me in the Gmail lockout men podcast at gmail.com or hit me up in the uh, hit me up in the um, Instagram over at lockout men. All right. Now, look, I'm not trying to be like none of these other other truck drivers out here. None, none of these other trucking YouTube YouTube truckers. I'm different. I'm trying to come at you. I'm trying to give you something that you can feel. You know what I'm saying? And if you feel me, yo, hook a brother up by supporting the channel any kind of way. All right. I am Lockout Man. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And I appreciate you. And on this note, let me let, me let the music play a little bit. I'm feeling that music, man. That music is so nice. And on that note, on that note, we are gone.